Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode. Uh, in our last episode, we spent some time looking at some strong acids and strong bases and calculating their pHs, which was a pretty straightforward process because these acids and bases dissociate 100%, producing all their hydrogens, or protons, and all of their hydroxides, and we just had to take the negative log of that. The extension to that is what happens if your acid is a weak acid. And it's something that you're going to encounter a lot in your chemistry class, and um, that you, it's a slightly different process to find the pH of weak acid problems. Now, in this video, I'm going to try to be ambitious and do four different types of weak acid equilibrium problems, because these are the four main types that you're likely to see. And so if you know you're looking for one in particular, like, for example, finding percent ionization, you can skip ahead or just watch the whole video if you want. That's always acceptable as well. So we're going to do finding the pH using the Ka. Uh, we're going to find the Ka value using the pH, which is kind of the reverse. And then we're going to learn about something called percent ionization and also finding the Ka using percent ionization. So four main types of problems, and we kind of have to get into the weeds and just get some done. So let's, let's get into it. Here's a very typical example uh, of the first type. What are the major species present in a solution of acetic acid? I'm doing this as a parallel to the last video, so you can see the difference. Calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid, and there's its Ka value. Okay, uh, always a good idea to write the equation for the reaction that's going to happen. All right, there's H, and I happen to know, sorry, C2H3O2 is the formula for there. Or if you don't know it, you could just put AC for acetic, just as long as you can keep track of it. And if I put it into water, I know that it, that is not a strong acid, and so it's going to make some of its conjugate base anion and a little bit of hydronium, but it's not going to be 100%. So what I have to do to solve this problem is actually treat it like an equilibrium, do an ice table and find out how much H3O plus will it actually be made and then take the negative log of it. So watch how this works. All right. Now, first, the major species. Now, in a strong acid, if this were a strong acid, the only major species would be water, the anion and the hydron or hydronium ion. But because this is a weak acid, a whole bunch of these have not yet dissociated. And so that's a major species also. And in fact, all four of these are going to be major species because yes, you have this and water and you'll have a somewhat significant concentration of those two things. Um, but we also have to include the actual acid. So keep that in mind for your own problems when that shows up. Well, let's go ahead and do an ice table. And we have a 0.1 molar solution to begin, zero of that, and approximately zero of that, although there is some hydronium in pure water. It's going to be insignificant, so I'll treat it like zero. Minus x plus x plus x, and I'm going to end up with 0.10 minus x, x, and x. The Ka value for that is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, and that's going to be equal to the acetate ion times the hydronium ion all over the original acetic acid. Okay. And I'm going to move up over here, give myself a little bit more room. Ka is now going to be equal to x times x over 1.1 minus x. So x squared over 0 0.100 minus x. And if I solve for x, which is going to be equal to the H3O plus concentration, because that's what X is, I get 1.34 times 10 to the minus third, and that's in moles per liter. And if I take the negative log, the pH is going to be the negative log of that, times 10 to the minus third, plug that into our pH equation, and I get a pH of 2.87, which is definitely not as low as it would be if it was a 0.1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid for example, that would have a pH of 1, but here we have a 2.87, so it's not quite as, as acidic because it's a weak acid. Okay, but you have to do an ice table. You have to solve for X in your ice table and then plug that into your pH equation. Okay, and our first pause the video moment is for you to try a similar one. This is hydrocyanic acid, HCN. What are the major, major species present? and calculate the pH of this solution. Feel free to pause the video and come back in a couple seconds.
All right, and when I did this one, I ended up with a pH of 4.6 because it's a higher pH, same kind of ice table, same setup, same plugging it in. Uh, my X turned out to be 2.48 times 10 to the minus fifth, which is lower than the acetic acid. And that's because the Ka value is much smaller. So you're not going to get as many protons in the solution. But if you ever were able to get a pH of 4.60, then great. We're on the track uh, to do a really good job on this video. All right, just a quick reminder that yes, uh, weak acids have small, um, small Ka values and their pHs are generally going to be between two and seven. So if you get something outside of that, just kind of do a does this make sense test and maybe go back and check your work. And if you do get something for a weak base somewhere outside of 12 to seven, then maybe there's an error. Uh, you might want to go check it. That's kind of a general rule, not the always rule. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this next one. So what if we actually know what the pH is? So pH of a 0.1 molar solution of lactic acid has a pH of 2.4. Calculate its Ka value. So you see how this is the opposite. We're not finding pH. We know pH, but we're finding the Ka value. So we kind of have to do a little bit of oppositeness. And I'll start with an ice table. It's always a good idea to do that. Zero. And you might notice that I didn't actually write the whole anion. I just abbreviated LACHLAC just for fun and for brevity. And so you can do it as however you want to, to keep track of what's there. Okay. And my Ka expression, I've already taken the time to write, which is going to end up being X squared over 0 0.10 minus X. And One second. Okay. So 0 0.010 minus x. So we don't know, we're supposed to find k, but we don't know what x is. So we have to figure out what x is. But x is going to be equivalent to the hydrogen ion concentration or the hydronium ion concentration. So to get that, I actually have to take a little detour and say that the hydronium ion concentration is going to be 10 to the negative pH value, which is 2.44. And 10 raised to the negative 2.44 is 3.63 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay. So that's my little detour. And that's also the x value. So what we can do then is go in here and say Ka equals 0 0.00363. I put it in standard form. 0.00363. And... 0.1 minus 0.00363. And by substituting in my x value, which is the H3O plus concentration, x squared over 0.1 minus that x value, which I had to take a little detour to go get, I get a Ka value of 1.37 times 10 to the minus fourth. So again, use your pH equations to get the x value and then kind of work backwards from there. And here's our second pause the video moment of the video. And this time we have a 0.4 molar solution of benzoic acid, and it has a pH of 2.29. What is its Ka value? Fun fact, benzoic acid has one acidic proton, and it's generally listed as the one on the right-hand side. So have fun with that, and come back in a couple of seconds for the answer. Okay. And when I did this one, I got an answer of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus fifth on that one. So again, same idea, same kind of equilibrium expression, went to find the H3O plus concentration, plugged it into my expression and solved for K. So that's a second example of an equal, uh, weak acid equilibrium type of problem. Okay, let's talk about percent ionization for a moment. If you spend enough time in the chem lab, you're gonna come around to this question or idea. And percent ionization is a way to measure or represent how much of the acid has dissociated as a percent. So in a in the previous video, um, we looked at 0.1 molar HF. And the H plus for that concentration, so starting with one molar HF, it'll dissociate, and the H plus concentration is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per liter. 
Now, if we take that X value or the H plus concentration and divide it by the original concentration and multiply by 100, we get a percent. And we would say that that is 2.7% ionized. It's just a definition. So take the time to write down the definition and then you always have to, uh, can refer to it. All right, so let's look at a quick problem. I'm trying to save a little bit of time here. So I decided to go ahead and solve the first one already. So we're gonna compare HNO2 at two different molarities. Okay, and look how I found the percent ionization of the first one. I'll pause the video so you can try the second one. It's very similar. Um, HNO2 is going to set up a little equilibrium like all the other weak acids is gonna do, nitrite ion being the conjugate base. 0.1 molar, and I did the usual X table, minus X plus X plus X. And the, the Ka value for this one is four times 10 to the minus fourth. So that's gonna be equal to the equilibrium constant expression. Now, then I went up here and I said, all right, let's plug in our X's and our 0.1 minus X. And I got an X value of 6.32 times 10 to the minus third moles per liter. And that's what I'm gonna to need to calculate my percent ionization, which is equal to the hydronium and the nitrite ion. They're the same. Percent ionization for this example is 6.32 times 10 to the minus third moles per liter. That's the X value that's gonna go on the top over the original 0.1 times 100. And I got 6.32% ionized for the first one. Okay, here's our third pause the video moment. Take a moment and see if you can calculate the percent ionization of the second one. 0.01 moles per liter and come back in a couple seconds. Okay, so you might think that your percent ionization should be the same because it's like the same weak acid, right? Shouldn't the same percentage of it um, actually dissociate? Well, about that. No, <laughs> it turns out if I do the math for this one, same idea, but I have a smaller initial concentration so even though I get a kind of similar value for the X value, it's a bigger fraction of that original concentration. And so this one is ionized 20%. And that's, that's kind of a difficult idea for us to come around because you may have gotten to that point and be like, wait, I got something so much bigger than the other one. Why? And did I do it wrong? Well, no, you did it right. And let's talk about that. Why does the percent ionization increase with smaller concentrations? All right. To answer this, you may have you may be asked this question, and um, this will hopefully help you out. You have to kind of think about Le Chatelier's principle. And Le Chatelier's principle. Let's talk about uh, an analogy to the size of the container with gaseous equilibrium. So, in a gaseous equilibrium, if you expand the container and give them more room to roam, they will shift to the side with more molecules. Okay. And that's one of Le Chatelier's principles, you know, statements. In an acid-base equilibrium like this, there's the one thing on the left, and there's actually two ions on the right. There's more ions on the right than there is on the left. And so it's kind of the same with dilution. More water molecules are added, and the system will shift to the right. Because now the volume of the solution has gotten bigger, there's more room for ions to roam, and it actually shifts to the side with more molecules or ions. Okay. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea that the percent ionization is not always the same. But hopefully these problems will help you calculate it when you get to those types of problems. All right, we got one more type of problem to go. And let's get to it. A 0.1 molar solution of tartaric acid is found to be 3.7% dissociated. That's another name for ionized. Calculate the Ka for this acid. So this is the reverse again. All right. And I took a moment to start setting up my ice table. 0.100 minus x, and then we'll do x and x. So the Ka value is going to be, and again, I abbreviated. I actually um, like to do this. Because sometimes these polyatomic ions, these anions are like C6H something or other, a bunch of carbons, a bunch of hydrogens, a bunch of oxygens. And just to keep things simpler, I'm just going to call it the tart minus ion or the tartrate ion. And that's going to be over H tart, which is just fun to say. And that's going to be equal to our X squared over 0.100 minus X. 
Okay, but again, I don't know what X is. So how am I supposed to do this? Well, the key, the clue here is that it's 3.7% dissociated. So let's go up here and say, all right, if we start out with 0.1 moles per liter and take 3.7% of that times 0.037, I get a value of 1.42 times 10 to the minus fourth. Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry. I get, sorry about that. Don't hate me. 0 0.0037. Okay, that is our um, actual amount of hydronium ion um, and the tart minus ion. And then if I actually use that, then I'm going to go back in here and plug that in for X. Okay. And the, so the Ka is going to be 0 0.0037 squared over 0 0.100 minus 0 0.0037. Since I know this, sometimes we get rid of that X value and drop it. But since I know it, I'm going to include it. And here is where I get 1.42 times 10 to the minus fourth for its Ka value. So again, set up your ice table. You'll need to find X, and that's where the percent ionization equation comes in. All right, here's our last pause the video moment of the video. And a 0.2 molar solution of a weak acid HX, doesn't matter what it is, let's just go find it. And it's found to be 9.7% dissociated. Calculate Ka for this acid, take a moment, pause the video, and I'll see you in a couple seconds. All right, and when I did this one, I got a Ka value of 2.08 times 10 to the minus three. Using the same process as before, ice table, Ka expression, and stepping aside using the percent times the original amount to get the percent, the actual amount dissociated, plugging that in for both x's and the 0.2 minus x. And when I did the math, I got a Ka value of 2.08 times 10 to the minus third. So I hope you found this helpful in your chemistry travels, doing your equilibrium problems. These are, in my opinion, the four main types of weak acid type problems. Um, you may see some other, you know, obscure kind of ones, um, exotic ones, if you want to call them that. Um, and you can, we can tackle those when we get there. But here you go. I uh, hope you found this helpful. And if you have any other questions that you'd like to send to me, you can send them in the comments or directly. In the meantime, a happy solving and have a great day.